So uh, somebody asked me earlier if I'd be willing to and able to make a video kind of showing a little bit of the features of the TI calculator. So you've got your TI calculator and, and we've talked a little bit in class about how useful this thing can be. Uh, and for dealing with um, linear equations, one of the things that's really, really nice about it is that it lets you put in an equation and then see a table of values. So let me show you real quick how you can do that. So you've got your calculator and one of the most important buttons for us is going to be this y equals and that button not only does it bring up this screen but it actually also shows you it tells you the way that the equation must be written you have to have your equation written as y equals something and for us it's y equals mx plus b that's the general form of a line that we're used to so for example imagine I have y equals negative 2x plus 1. So notice how all these buttons that I'm showing up here, you can see as I kind of go along, you can see what buttons that I'm hitting. You can also see based on the keys that I'm pressing. You can see that for the x key, I use this, the, the variable button up here. And for us, x is always going to be our input variable, our independent variable. Um, the other place that you see X show up is way down here. It's an alpha option underneath the or above the STO button down here. Um, you you want to stick with this button here because if you use the alpha, this button down here, it produces the same X, but you have to hit two buttons in order to make it work. So we're going to go back and delete that. So the, the equation that I'm going to enter, minus 2X plus 1, I'm interested in seeing what a table of values for this looks like. Now, in order to see the table, you can see it floating right above this graph button. For our purposes, we're interested in taking a look at the table. And the generic kind of standard form of the table looks like this. We've got an X value list here and the corresponding Y values. And you'll notice this says Y1 because way back in our Y equals, that was the first equation that we entered. If we type something in here for y2 or y3 or y4 or any of the others, when I go back to my table, you'd see all the equations that I have typed in here. So the nice thing that you'll notice right away is that I can kind of use my cursor and walk down and walk up. So as I'm walking, you can see that when x is equal to 3, y equals negative 5. When x is equal to 0, y equals 1. So right away, you can create a table of values that let you kind of get five or 10 or however many you want points that you can then put on a grid and then graph it if you wanted to. So that's useful for us. The other way that this is particular, particularly useful is that it allows us to kind of zoom in on a table. So not only can we see that when X is equal to eight, y is negative 15, but I can actually kind of zoom in and say, not just 8, but I want to see what is it when x is 8.1. And the way to do that, and, and it kind of disappeared here, so let me pull up the, the table feature again. You see where underneath where it says press plus for delta TBL. That means literally we're going to press the plus key, and that's going to ask us what do we want to have for our step size on my table and right now the step size is one in other words x is going up by one each time but instead if i type point one or point zero if i type in point one and then hit enter take a look at what happens so now instead of going from eight to nine it goes from eight to eight point one to eight point two and so you can see what happens when x goes up by a little less than one it goes up by a little less than one, then Y goes up a little less. And so I can keep zooming in if I want. I hit plus again, and I can change my step size to point oh one. I can make it really, really small. So you can see what happens as X increases and X gets bigger like this. So that was the first feature that's really, really useful to see on the uh, TI, uh, the TI 84 calculator. Um, I'm going to go back and change this here. So I'm going to go, go back up here to boop, boop, boop to eight. If ever you want to change your table settings, the other place to look is right here above the window button where it says table set. If you do second and then window, it'll pull up this menu and say, where do you want the table to start? 
you can make it start wherever you want. You can make it start at zero, for example. And then the next thing underneath here, that the delta TBL. Remember, delta means change. So the change in the table. So how, how often or, or how much do you want the table to increase by? And for us, for, for starters, a good place to start is to just start with one. So the step size is going to be one. And then these other two things we'll get to here in a second. So now if I go back to table, I should see exactly what I saw before. So the other thing that's really particularly useful about the table is I can use it to kind of solve equations in some interesting ways. So you'll notice underneath here where it says independent, and then the options are auto or ask. Now auto means literally automatic. It kind of fills in the table automatically for the independent variable. And remember, independent means X and dependent means y. But if I if I were to say I want it to ask, so I walk the cursor over, highlight that by pressing enter. And so now what the table is going to do is it's going to start at zero and step size of one, but instead of filling in all the independent values, all the x values, it's going to wait and it's basically going to ask me, what do I want? So go back to table now, second graph. And you can see it's just sitting there, it's waiting. It's saying x equals, well, what do you want x to equal? And this is where you can say, well, what, what would it be if x equals 3? Enter. And it says, oh, y is equal to negative 5. And just for a refresher, remember the equation that we're using here is minus 2x plus 1. So if I plug in 3 for x, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 1 is, sure enough, negative 5. So what this calculator is really doing for me is it's solving this equation when x is 3. I can say what's y when x is 6? Negative 11. What's y when x is negative 5? It's 11. What's y when x is 100? it's negative 199. So, so basically this, the calculator is now kind of solving the equation for me. So the nice thing about the calculator is you can always change the settings. I can go back to table settings and say, no, 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 I don't want that. I want it to be back to auto, be like I had it before. And sure enough, as long as I'm dealing with this equation, the same equation, if I go back to table settings, you can see we're right back to where we started. So that's kind of a, a quick tour of the features of the table that are particularly useful. It allows us to, in the table settings, just without doing anything, we can kind of move the cursor down and see when x is 3, what's y. It's a table of values. But more than that, it can also be used to solve the equation, and that's by changing the independent to ask but you don't always want it to be there, so be willing to change it back. So table set and table, those are the two things that you wanna be good with using. And of course, y equals, that's where you type in your equation. So hopefully that helps and that, that'll get you using your calculator in more and better ways.